Here is just to remind you what we would not get. Um, and you know, a one point nine tr- trillion dollar relief bill. There's going to be a lot of people. I think there's a, I think there is a very strong argument that when you, if if you are someone who believes that material benefit is um, going to help uh, the Democrats electorally. There's going to be a bunch of families out there, not 86% of families in this country who have four members are going to get a check for $5,600. They are also that same family, assuming two kids, they're going to get another $3,000 or $3,600, depending on the age of the kid, spread out over the course of the year in money. Um, That's serious cash. Uh, that is, you know, uh, over 10% of your, of your income there. Uh, if you're making $75,000 or, you know, um, so that's, uh, that, that's some, some real money there. There was a failure to deal with anything sort of structural. You have a must pass bill that the Democrats have, and, and, and there's a failure to put that in there. And, you know, we didn't get into this with Digby and I meant to. I don't know. Like, I mean, if I had to take that vote in the House, because it's going back to the House, and and there's there's a good argument as to why maybe House progressives should vote against the bill, send it back into conference, um, and try and and try and get try and get a better whether it's fifteen dollar minimum wage, whether it's a two thousand dollar check. Try and get more. Try and win. Try and win. Get a win to show some power, both for the sake of showing power and to get some material benefit. I, I and you know I asked Digby about this. We we had recorded something for Ring of Fire and and uh, I, I screwed up the tape. And both of us were like, I'm glad I don't have to make that decision because, a, it is not you know it's not a parity dynamic. You're not forcing Joe Manchin to vote against it in this situation, right? You're the one who's voting against it. And you're the one who's holding up the COVID relief bill. You're the one who's holding up $5,600 checks to everybody and to unemployed people, on top of which they would get that $1,400 and whatever kids they have, they're also looking at a $300 um, benefit on their, um, in terms of their, uh, their unemployment and tax relief uh, probably on their on their unemployment benefits um, yesterday Emma I read uh, I, I read out uh, helpfully uh, a listener sent in a link to the IRS even if your uh, uh, your your 2020 uh, earnings were were down and your 2019 earnings were up even if you don't file before, if you file afterwards, you will get the benefit. They will give you the benefit. So it's just a question of timing as to when you get it. So there's a lot, there's a lot of good stuff in this for people. Cobra extensions, horrible mechanism to do it, but on the receiving end, you still get health insurance. I mean, this is the situation. It's like, do you deprive and the AOC, if you're coming from uh, one of the hardest hit COVID, uh, you know, counties or districts in the country and, and uh, one of the, um, uh, the you know, where, where people are struggling more than many other places in the country. Do you, do you hold up this bill with the hopes of getting something better? And I, I think there's a decent argument on either side, to be honest with you. I, I'm glad I wouldn't have to make that decision because just, for, you know, put aside your, your own personal political calculations do you want to risk? What if you do it and a worse bill comes out? What if you, you do it and they say like, yeah, we'll go back to conference. We're going to cut another hundred bucks out of the unemployment benefit. And now we're and, and it's also just again? the the deadline is is well, the, the cliff is in the fourteenth. You got the cliff nine is days. the fourteenth. You've got to yeah sign it and then also give time for the mechanisms to send yeah, out these benefits. There's definitely there's definitely people who are going to go without um, without without their benefits for a period of time. There's definitely some. And so uh, it's a, I'm glad I don't have to make that decision. Let's put it that way. And I, but I, but I could definitely see like, 
you know what? This could be one of the few opportunities you have to exert this power, test out the theory, I guess. But I don't know if I want to be doing that kind of experiment. The difficulty is, and this is always the dilemma for Democrats, and it's the dilemma for progressives, depending you know, when they're dealing with like corporate Democrats. It's do I risk like their investment in this instance, you know, the progressives in the house, their investment in getting this money to people is greater than it is for Joe Manchin because Joe Manchin's political fortunes are, um, are tied up in denying people stuff. And uh, not coincidentally, he probably doesn't care as much. I mean, you know, uh, I, I, very hard to make the argument that an AOC doesn't care, right? You can say like, they don't know how to wield power if you want, but the, but, you know, very hard to find another member of Congress who has done more uh, for their district or for people just like by leveraging their internet fame. And, oh yeah. Well, and so, I mean, that is the dilemma that they're more invested in getting those people that money. And can I just, Sam, I, I'm going to give this to you cold. Brendan, I sent it in the chat. This is a clip of Kirsten Cinema voting no on the minimum wage. She brought a chocolate cake in to work today, apparently. Very let them eat cake vibes. Do you have this, Brendan? This is a gif of her. Do you see that? Oh my God. She gave uh, the thumbs down. She gave the thumbs down, like a little, little hip jolt as if she was doing the bend and snap or something from Legally Blonde. Yeah. She, no, she's, 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 um, she's is that taunting really people. video of her doing that though. Is that really video of her doing? It? Yes. Oh my God. I mean, that is, she is, this is her. I'm a maverick. This is, I mean, it's so obvious, right? I mean, it is, she's, she's trying to be John McCain. Um, yeah, I we know, gotta, but we like, gotta do something about Arizona until we figure out what the hell's going on over there with their senators. I mean, and, she's she's like putting on a show as she votes against the minimum wage. Yep. I don't even like. Wow, girl boss, well, yes, I mean, look, queen. Here's the point: that she, I, I, if I'm one of these senators, I'm pissed that it's I'm having to vote against it as an amendment. And I, I look, and I'm not, I'm not, make it clear here. I'm not expressing sympathy, but we knew this wasn't going to pass. Bernie knew it wasn't going to pass. What is the value in a showing that eight senators vote against it? I mean, these are all senators that, you know, I think we've had, I think we've had at least one or two of these senators. We've, we've already, you know, we've already had the, you know, legitimate challenges to in the past. Um, but what is the value of making cinema and mansion take a vote against the minimum wage? Put put aside self-satisfaction. And from their perspective, they're pissed because if it's in the bill, like I, I still contend that if it was in that $1.9 trillion COVID bill, they would vote for it, even if it was in there. And why? Because they would go to their constituents and they would say, I was against that was against the raise in the minimum wage. I know that hurts small businesses, but at the same time, there's X number of other dollars for small businesses, blah, blah, blah. And I wanted to make sure that people got their money. And so I, so I took it, I, I, I swallowed it. But the villain is Biden in this situation. This obscures it. it Biden obscures should have it. said- but it also, but it also, here's the, here's the negative impact. I don't, this is, I am not sympathetic with Manchin and cinema, but the fact is they exist. You know you're going to lose that vote, but you're making them pay a political price. But to what end? To what end? Are they going no, to be more inclined but, to vote for something like that in the future? Probably not. They're right. going to go well, the there problem, and make a show of it by yeah. saying, F you, for making yeah. me take this vote, F you. And that's what she's doing. And that doesn't help us in the long run or in the short run, in any run. Because she's less likely to change her vote now, especially because she has the cover of those six other senators who did it just to protect Joe Biden, who and, did it just. And this is why I disagree with Bernie here. Yeah. I don't like this strategy. 
Doesn't it should have made it just about them. Make it just about them. Then they have to pay the political price. Just like when Kamala Harris went on West Virginia TV and went on Arizona TV. And then what do you know? Now, now they're in favor of the stimulus checks. They could have done that for the $15 min- minimum wage and overruled the parliamentarian or made them make that vote. I don't think they would have. I'm with you, Sam. I don't yep. think they would have held up that $1.9 trillion stimulus. But, but now you've muddied the waters. The, the villains there. You know, the, the primary villain here was Biden for not bucking the parliamentarian and and making them make that choice. So uh, I just I don't agree. I, yeah. I wish they didn't strip it. I don't understand. Yeah. Here is Mitch McConnell with that said, talking about how the one point nine trillion dollar relief bill is unnecessary because everything's going fine. Everybody, you're fine. You're fine. One in five people can't pay their rent. You're fine. We are already on track to bounce back from this crisis. That's not because of this bill. It's because of our work last year. It's the trend this new Democratic government inherited. We're going to come roaring back, and mostly not because of this bill. In fact, in some ways, in spite of this bill. How, how is that possible? We're going to come back in spite of the in bill where we're bill. putting all this money into the economy. Uh, he doesn't well, have any talking points for this. He it's so talk- unconvincing. Doesn't have any talking points. He just wants to be. Uh, a- a- and incidentally, there's a report that uh, he is trying to whip votes in the Kentucky state legislature to change the way um, replacements for s- uh, senators who retire are done. Right now, it's by the governor who is, as you know, a Democrat. He wants them to change the law so that it's the Republican legislatures. Um, And that is usually an indication, trying to think of where we saw that before, uh, an indication that he may be exiting. And he just, you know, put it up Well, he's like, I've done my life's work, right? Democrats refused to eliminate the filibuster. And that allowed us to, to basically pass all the tax cuts that we need through reconciliation. And I made sure that none of Obama's, uh, that Merrick Garland didn't get on the Supreme Court. And I put all my uh, young conservatives into the Supreme Court, cemented that for decades. My corporate donors are very happy. And now my wife is in, 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 under some sort of investigation. And so maybe it's time for me to bow out now. Again, yeah. like the most effective lawmaker of the past, like 50 years, 25 no, years. No, I wouldn't say lawmaker. I would say he is the most effective Senate majority leader because I, he, I, what, what laws did he pass? He got tax cuts. That's it. Okay. He, he, yeah. he stacked the courts and that is what um, he was his most effective do. And he did that because he was a majority leader and he was a, a, a very effective, not necessarily in making laws, but uh, in, 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 in inhibiting and obstructing and uh, putting judges on there. Right, and I just talk. and I just one last point about him. I just wonder if he sees the writing on the wall here in terms of like there's no there's no veneer of fiscal conservatism left. They've worn it all thin. They've sanded it down and Trump just exploded the whole thing too. So all of the things that he cares so deeply about deregulation, tax cuts for the rich, whatever. It's really hard to do it with when the media isn't buying their deficit stuff anymore. After well, those, that, like, like, he's he's maybe worn out his welcome of lies, if that makes sense, and maybe he senses that because he's uh, you know. I think it's more just a question of like, what is there left for him to do? You know, I think like I think he probably made the decision when 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 they didn't get the win the Senate. There's no point. I mean, he's he's he would only be playing defense now, and he just you know. Why, why, why stick around to play defense when you just scored so many uh, touchdowns, right? Like, you know, I, I'm well, I mean, he's off. the, t- he's Tom, he's Tom Brady, right? He's already got those seven rings. Maybe, yeah. maybe it's but like there's, the- when would he get that other ring? Because he would have to wait for a Republican president in 2024. Exactly. He's not getting any younger and he's not going to do that. And so yeah. uh, why stay around to play defense? 